Yeah. 
And good morning to everyone. Is it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. You can have your seats. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our God is a good God. He's mighty and awesome. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to you. I just want to say a blessed good morning to. Bishop and our First Lady, Pastor Anna Maria Douglas, and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share with you all this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The title of my message is The Peace of God. Amen? Now, before I begin, we all, we may hear some people will say the Bible is just a religious book or all kind of thing about the Bible. But the Bible is actually there for us to guide us and to lead us. And there are so many things that is relevant to us today that is in the Bible. Amen? All of us, we all go through struggles. Is there is anyone here that never go through struggle or never hear bad news or never had any situation that is beyond them? You could lift your hands. I don't think so. We all each day may have something that we have to go through. We may wake up one morning and we may not know what we will have to go through. But as our day goes on, things happen. And this is something that happens to all of us. One of the things that we know that the enemy wants to steal from us is our peace. That is what he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Our peace. When he gets hold of our peace, he has hold of us. He have us in a bondage. He have us in a situation where in our mind we say, is there any way out? Because he tried to steal our peace. He tried to steal our peace through our health. He tried to steal our peace through our relationship. He tried to steal our peace through our finances. He tried to steal our peace through our children, our loved ones, our friends, our family. He tried all ways and all form to steal that peace. And we all live in a real world with real situation, real circumstance that we have to go through on a daily basis. We may put a smile in our face, but we know in our heart we still have to deal with a situation. And here is what this Bible, our Holy Bible, have to say about how we handle peace. Amen? So the title of my message is, again, The Peace of God. Could you please turn to me to Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And just for a moment, could we just stand as we read the word of God? Hallelujah. And before I start with verse 6, I'll just go to verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the Philippians. A message of peace, a message to be happy, to be in unity. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. And it says in verse 6, 
Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is any praise worthy, meditate on these things. Amen? Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, O Lord, for your word. We thank you, Father God, for you are mighty and awesome, and we know you love us. We know you're a father that cares about us, O God. And Lord, Father, this morning, O God, I commend this message into your hands that it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit. That Holy Spirit, you take divine preeminence, take full control, and bring forth this message the way that you will have it too. Father God, I pray for all of us that our hearts will be receptive, that we will be as good grounds, O God, that your word will be a root and bring forth fruit in due season. We bless and honor you in Jesus' name. Hide me behind this pulpit and have your way, Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. There are three points to this message. Prayer, peace, and power. Amen? Let's look at first the first point. Passage, the first part in this passage, the first word is the Lord say, Paul says, be anxious for nothing. Now we will say, what does it mean by be anxious for nothing? Amen? The word anxious means to be worry, to be uneasy. Amen? You may have your seats. It means to be eagerly wishing. A lot of times... The word anxious is something that happens gradually. It may start off by a simple worry that begins to build up into anxiety, which gradually goes into frustration, which gradually goes to a mental breakdown. So sometimes we may have a situation that started off very small, that concerns us so much that we begin to get anxious about it. And then we allow this, anxious, this anxiety to just increase because things are not happening quickly enough. That leads to frustration, which actually affects our health as well. Where some people may actually have a mental breakdown because of anxiety, because of worry, because of fear. So that's why the first thing is be anxious for nothing. Amen? And we would learn later on why he said be anxious for nothing and how we could... Be anxious for nothing. Things happen and it's beyond us. But let me go on. We have a heavenly father who wants his children to be without fear and worry. We know he didn't give us a spirit of fear, of bondage, again, to fear. But he gave us a spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. Our father, have, he loves us, he bless us, and he provides for us ways of escape. That he say he wouldn't allow temptation to arise where there's no way of escape. Amen? We see here the word supplication. The Greek word for supplication is desis. That is D-W-E-S-I-S. More than petitioning. It means an intense earnesty of extended prayer. To fully transfer your burden of your soul into God's hand. So when he said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication... Now we know what prayer means. We know our prayer is our petition. We say, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. So this is one of the ways that Paul say, be anxious for nothing. Through prayer, we have that confidence that we have a heavenly father that loves us so much that we have that peace of mind and confidence that he is listening means that he hears us. And we know that our petition that we desire for him, from him is his will. He wants us to be in good health. 
He wants us to be in peace. He wants our family to be together. These are all his will. He wants our marriages to be blessed. He gives good gifts to us because we are his children. Any parent would want to give good gifts to their children. Any parent would love to see their children be happy. And so is our Heavenly Father. That's why Paul said, be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer. So when we get up on mornings, the first thing we do is that we pray. We put everything in his hands. We ask the Lord, Father God, you see and you know all things. You know what is going to face me today? I don't know. But I put this day in your hands that you deal with it. That we surrender our day. We surrender whatever is going to pop up during the course of the day into his hands. That he is going to deal with it. He's going to have preeminence. Whether it be a situation where we need his divine favor. Our God is so sweet. We see that wherever we go, we ask him for that favor. And we see things will pull through for us. And this all stems by having that relationship and that love for him. There are certain things that we as believers are to know that do hinder our prayer. So a lot of times we will say, but I pray and I pray and I don't know why my prayer not answering. Simple things as unforgiveness is a hindrance to our prayer. We have to forgive. That's why the Lord said, leave your gifts to the altar. And if you have ought against a brother, go reconcile before you bring your gifts. So a lot of times we may say, but I am praying and my prayer not answering. We may harbor unforgiveness towards another person that something may happen for years and we still hold on to that. And then we would wonder why our prayer not being answered. Let's ask the Lord to give us the courage to forgive and give us a heart of forgiveness. Not forgiving yourself. We have people that hold themselves in bondage because of past sins. And they are eaten up inside because that peace is not there because they, are, they haven't forgiven themselves for things that they have done. But when they ask the Lord to forgive him or to forgive them for whatever they have done, he's a faithful God that he's slow to anger and quick to forgive. So not forgiving yourself also steals your peace and also hinder your prayer because you're seeing yourself as being unworthy that you can't go before the Lord because you can't find yourself to forgive. But I want you to know that we have a forgiving God, that our God is quick to forgive, that he wish none that could perish but all should come to repentance. He said, confess your sins one to another. And once we confess and we ask the Lord for forgiveness, he will forgive us. So we let go of that unforgiveness both to people and to ourselves. Other hindrances to our prayer as well is lack of faith or not believing. We know faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. When we have a relationship with our Heavenly Father, we know and our faith begins to grow through His Word that germinates within us. We know that we have a faithful God and a loving Father that will take care of us. So the Lord say, we must believe. I don't want to go ahead of myself, but we must have a prayer of belief and faith. To know in our heart that the Lord say, ask and you shall receive Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Him who asks shall receive. Those who seek shall find. And those who knock, it shall be opened. And Jesus knew, he keep telling us that we can ask, seek, and find. Ask, seek, and knock. And through our prayer, we know that we could be able to boldly go before his throne and lay our petitions down. Amen? So we see he said, with prayer and supplication... Now we look at the word supplication and we want to know the word desis means our petition, means to eagerly go down. Have we ever had a situation where we get news and it's beyond us? A simple phone call could change our entire life. I remember receiving four years back a simple phone call from the hospital that my husband had died. That changed my entire life. Desis, what we should do supplication. We go down on our knees and we cry out because this is beyond us. We cannot handle this with our own humanly condition. We need something greater to handle this. You may get a news of an accident or a news of a diverse disease or something. This is supplication. Our supplication is that inner cry that we cry out to our Father. So he said by prayer, 
and supplication. Amen? So we pray, we cry out with that cry. And we say, Lord, give me the strength to be able to handle this situation. And his perfect peace that passes all understanding will keep us and take us through that situation. My sister Nesta could agree with me. By hearing the, the death of your, your loved one, your spouse, for years, for years, that we could be able to cry out to the Lord in supplication. Lord, hold me. Give me the strength. Let me be able to handle this. And he give us that grace, that inner peace that passes all understanding, that people wouldn't understand why she's smiling, why she's so peaceful. It's not my own human nature peace, but it's God peace that is in me that we could agree upon. So do Paul say, be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication. Now when we supplicate and we cry out to the Lord, what's the next step? With thanksgiving. He expects that when we supplicate and we cry out to him, all we have to do is rejoice. Why? Because we know that he hears us and we know he will give us the desires of our heart, the petition that we desire of him. So we rejoice with thanksgiving. And this is what the Apostle Paul was telling to the Philippians, and not just the Philippians, but we today, be anxious for nothing but in all things with prayer and supplication, with, we buffer it with, our thanksgiving. Amen? So we give him thanks, we worship, we praise, we just thank God. Why? Because we know he is going to deal with it. We know he's going to take care of it. That's like if a child asks a parent for something, and that child know that parent is, will give them whatever it is they ask for as long as it's something that is right, which is according to his will. That child goes about their business playing happy, and they're not worrying or fretting or, or studying, I wonder if I'll get this or that. They know that daddy or mommy will get it for them. So they are at peace. This is what God wants from us. With our prayer and supplication, buffered by our thanksgiving, we continue with our business praising him, glorifying him, thanking him, because we know that he's going to take care of it. Hallelujah. One of the essential cure for anxiety and worry is relationship. Relationship with who? Relationship with God our Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ who lay his life down for us that we are the redeemed through his cleansing blood. When we have a relationship with our father, we have that peace and that assurance to know of his nature. And know that God is love, that he's a loving God. That whatever we ask him in our prayer and in our supplication, we know that he will fulfill it. He would work it out. It may not happen immediately, but as we grow in faith and we grow, we will actually see how he put things together, how he actually placed things together and piece it together that it comes for the greater good. It comes to our benefit. So one of the greatest cure for anxiety is relationship with God. We as his children, he wants us to be obedient, obedient to his word, obedient to his voice. And this is having relationship. Even getting to know him in an intimate way. By having that close relationship and bond by talking to him. Just like I'm speaking to you, we could speak to Abba Father in the name of Jesus. And we actually hear his voice. Amen? Because we receive the spirit of adoption that bear witness to our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen? And if children then ears and joint ears with Christ. So having a relationship with our father, just like our earthly child will have a close relationship with their parents, that parent is so joyful in their heart to see that their child loved them and showing them appreciation, that that parent will want to give that child the very best. The same thing with our father. When we have that close relationship with him through Jesus Christ, 
He is joyful and pleased with what we are doing. That's why we stand in obedience. He is joyful and, and happy to say we are doing the things that we are purposed to do. And he is joyful and happy to bless us with good gifts. Bless us with the things that we need to have. Amen? So having a relationship with our Father is one of the main things and cure for anxiety for us. And not just for us, but for the whole world. That's why John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, not the Christians, the world. He loved the Christians, of course. But he loved the world that Jesus died for everyone. Regardless of their religion, where they come from, Jesus died. That's why I say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen? That whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And what it means there, shall not perish, it don't mean, it means that someone will say, I'm not going to Christ, I'm not going to believe in him. And they just hold on to their, their, their sins, and they just hold on to, in their mind to say they need to work it out. But when you go to Christ and you know, well, his blood can redeem us. Is that atonement, which is that sacrifice for our sins that will cleanse us. When we go to him, we know that we will have everlasting life, meaning that we could live that abundant life and beyond. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, Matthew 6, 34, Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Amen? But sufficient is the grace for the trouble thereof. Each day is a new situation. Each day is something new that is going to come up. That's why the Lord said, don't worry about tomorrow. Because today we already pray and say, Father, whatever is the face today, you deal with it. You handle it. And his grace is sufficient to take us through that day. As we wake up the next day, that's another new day. You do the same thing. So that's why we're not going to worry about tomorrow. Let's deal with today. And let the Lord just deal with whatever is going to face us for that day. And we do it day by day by day. Amen? Because we know his grace. We know who he is. Jesus speak against worry and anxiety because the watchful care of our Father who is always mindful of our daily needs. So he know, he, he, he don't want us to be worrying. He wants us the same as Paul had reiterated, be anxious for nothing. Once we know who our Father is and we know his nature and we know his love and grace, we would not be worrying. We would just be surrendering to him on a day-to-day -day base. We know any thing that is beyond us, we could supplicate. And we, we buffer those things with our thanksgiving. Hallelujah. For our God is a great and a mighty God. We see the word worry is mary, mary im neo, which come from the word marizo, which means divided or in two parts. Now we may ask ourselves, why the Lord said don't worry or be anxious for nothing? Now, the word merizo means to divide into parts, right? So, meaning a distraction, a preoccupation. When we worry in our minds, we are preoccupied in our mind. Because we may try to do our work, we may try to do our daily task, but in our mind, we are divided. Because of that worrying, we keep going back in our mind with whatever situation that is bothering us. So when the Lord said, do not worry for nothing, do not worry for tomorrow, means don't divide your thoughts. Don't have your mind preoccupied or stressed out. Because when your mind and your thoughts are preoccupied and stressed out, when it's divided, you cannot focus on what you have to do. You cannot focus on thanksgiving. Because you will have a heavy heart. But when we have a, a heart that, when we have a, a light heart or we have a heart of thanksgiving, we could freely praise the Lord. We could freely be thankful. So that's why he say, do not worry. Don't want us to be divided in our, mind, in our mind. We need our mind to be clear. We need our mind to be focused. So when we lay that into his hands, we know he will deal with it. 
And we also know that we can move on with what we have to do. So with clarity in our mind, we can be successful in the things that we have to do. With clarity in our minds, we can make right decisions. We can make right choices. In things that we need to do, he say, acknowledge him in all your ways and lean not into your own understanding. So we are to ask the Lord what it is to do and how to do it and when to do it. So part of our prayer, when we have things to do, we ask the Lord what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And through his Holy Spirit, he's going to guide us. He's going to lead and direct us. And that is how we have peace. Because we know that he would lead us into the direction that we will have to go. We see Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways, what we do? Acknowledge him. And he will direct our path. That is another key for us to have peace. Because we may decide to do something, but the first word say, trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. So when we have a relationship with our Father, we could trust him in all our ways. Not some, but in all our ways. Meaning everything that we have to do, we acknowledge him. We ask him how to do it. I used to sew bridal gowns. The Holy Spirit was the one. I never learned to sew a dress. And I professionally sew gowns. Used to. <laughs> but it's through the Holy Spirit. I ask him. And he gave me that gift to be able to do so. And step by step, I'll actually get instructions on how to do gowns. That I actually had a bridal store, Simply Elegant Bridal. No, I'm not put in any plug for that. But that just goes trusting the Lord with all our heart. And in all our ways, acknowledge him. We may have decisions. We may have an idea to start a business or to do something. And we may wonder how we're going to do this. Or if it will be successful or how it's going to turn out or how we're going to start doing this. All we have to do is trust in the Lord. Acknowledge him. And he will direct us what to do. Whether it be opening our own business or whatever that we plan to do. Not in ourselves alone, but for our children as well. We are to trust in the Lord and acknowledge him in every area in our lives. Luke 1, 19, verse 13 say, So I say unto you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Not going to be open unto you. Jesus encouraged prayer by reminding us of the nature of the one whom we are praying to. And as much as we can expect our Heavenly Father to bless us with the best gift, which is the Holy Spirit, He will also bless us with the lesser gifts as well, which is our basic needs that we have. So we have to thank God for His Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of wisdom, the Holy Spirit of power, the Holy Spirit of peace. Our primary needs are spiritual. And with a proper relationship with God through the Holy Spirit, we have the ground assurance that he will provide both spiritual and material needs for us. Some may say, why it is we praying in the name of Jesus? A lot of people will say, Jesus is just a man. Why are people talking about Jesus? But we have to understand who Christ is and why we pray in his name and who he is to us. What does Jesus mean to us? I'll take, tell you as we go further down in the other point for peace. However, we see in Mark chapter 11, verses 20 to 24 reads, When the disciples saw the fig tree withered away, Jesus said to them, um, what the, Jesus first said to them to have faith in God. For whosoever say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and doesn't doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he say will be done. He shall have whatever he say. One of the things that the Lord say is to believe. Now, if we say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, we will say but a physical mountain we can't speak to. The mountain is symbolic of our problems. 
So when we have our problems, our situation, our Lord, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, tell us, if we say unto this mountain, be thou removed. So when we pray, we pray the solution and not the problem. A lot of time we pray what the mountain is and not what we want or how we want the mountain to be removed. And this is something that we need to bear in mind. Let's pray the solution and not the problem. So when we pray and say, this mountain be thou removed, Lord, I thank you with thanksgiving. Lord, I pray for health and strength. Lord, I thank you and I pray for financial breakthrough or whatever it may be. You are praying your solution. Not, Lord, it's hard to get work. I catch on my tail. Lord, I don't have money. That is praying about the mountain and not saying to the mountain, be thou removed. With thanksgiving, we thank him. Amen? So we have the authority to speak unto our situation to be by declaration, by declaring and decreeing, I am healed in the name of Jesus. I am blessed in my coming and my going out. I'm the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, and blessed is everything I lay my hands on to doing. There are many things we can say speaking to a mountain, meaning that we could actually speak life to ourselves and to our situation and not death. Even in our children as well, if they, we may see them going astray, but we say, I declare and decree that they will serve the Lord. I declare and decree they'll be successful. I declare and decree that they, blessed is everything they lay their hands on to doing. We will not speak about the mountain. They hadn't. They're not listening. Then they, they know that is speaking about the mountain. So we're speaking to the mountain and making declaration. Yes. Amen. Why? Because God makes us after our own image and likeness. And we can call forth. We can speak things into being. We can speak blessing and not curse. Yes. Hallelujah. John 14, verse 11 to 13. Jesus said, I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Those that believe in me, the works that I do, you can do also, and greater works than these. It doesn't mean that we can do greater miracles than Christ, but it means greater in scope. Through his Holy Spirit, he's in all of us. And we can do the same thing that he did. Why? Because the, the gift of the Holy Spirit resides in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. And it's not us, but it's through the Holy Spirit that we can do the works that what Christ had done. Amen? Hallelujah. Jesus said, Whatsoever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in heaven. Prayer offered in the name of Jesus is according to his revealed nature and purpose. And he had fully weight of his authority behind it. Philippians 2.9 says, God had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in those in heaven and those in earth and those under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So this is why we pray in the name of Jesus. Because God exalted him and gave him a name that is above every name. Christ's exaltation is absolute. His lordship is universe also. It's, also, it will not be universally recognized until he return. And what that means is that his lordship is absolute, meaning that it will happen. His lordship is there. But it will be recognized worldwide until his return. But there will be a lot that will receive and exalt him as Lord. My next point is peace. Philippians 4, 7. The peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. Prayer and peace are connected. One who entrusts their care to the Lord instead of fretting will experience the peace of God. We see the word peace come from the Hebrew word shalom, which f signifies wholeness. The word shalom means wholeness, and it's often, often rendered by the word soteria. The word soteria also means salvation. So the word peace in Hebrew, shalom, 
It's also rendered by the word soteria, which means salvation or peace offering. We see in first, Second Thessalonians 3.16, the title, The Lord of Peace, which is referring to Jesus Christ, which is shalom or soteria or salvation. The New Testament translates Messiah as the anointed one. Christ in the Greek word is Christus, which also means Messiah. Amen? So Jesus translated in Hebrew is also Yahshua, which means Lord is salvation. So here we're going to see who Christ is. Christ, Yahshua, meaning Lord is salvation, which also means soteria, which also means shalom, which also means peace. So Christ is the prince of peace. That's the meaning of his name. Yahshua, Lord is salvation. When we call from God from hearts that remain in his word, his peace will flood our soul. So when we cry out for him, when we cry out to him with his peace in our heart, he, would, he will lead us, he will protect us, and he will provide for us. Isaiah 26, verse 3 to 4, he said, He will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him, who trusts in the Lord. So once we keep our mind stayed on him, he will keep us in perfect peace. And he will keep us in perfect peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Messiah. John 15, 17 says, If you abide in me and my word abide with you, in you, you shall ask what you will, and it will be done unto you. So one of the ways that we can be able to know how to petition is through his word. It says, study to show thyself approved. So when we study his word and when we get to know him, to have that intimacy with God, we are to know his word. And we are to know who he is and how much he loves us. So when we know his word and his word is in us, and we abide in him by acknowledging him in all our situation, his perfect peace that passes all understanding is going to fill our hearts. Why? Because we receive the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, which is Yahshua, Christ Jesus, who is the Anointed One. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world give. Let not your heart be troubled, yet let it not be afraid. A lot of time people may think to gain peace, is to have fame, fortune, and prosperity. Fame and fortune. That is the world, the world way of getting peace. Our peace is that a perfect peace that passes all understanding. Jesus gives us that peace. Because we do live in a real world with real situation and real circumstances that may come against us. And we need something extra, not just worldly peace to keep us satisfied but we need the peace of God we need that peace that inner peace that regardless of what is happening we have that assurance through our prayer and supplication and through our thanksgiving that we have the perfect peace of God we have Christ in our heart and his peace will fill us to be able to handle whatever situation whatever news come our way for he is a mighty God amen To have peace, we are also to cast down imagination, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We see here, Philippians 4, 8, finally, brethren, what are the things to think of? Anything that is true, whatever things that are honest, whatever things that are pure, whatever things that are lovely, whatever things that are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. We know that the weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of stronghold. A lot of times our worry and fear is in our mind. Our burdens and frustration is in our mind. So the Lord said, bring everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God to his 
obedience. We take that worry, we take that stress, and he tells us how to think. Anything that is kind, anything that is peaceful, anything that is lovely, anything that is of a good report. So we are to renew our mind on a daily basis. And how we renew our mind is because we know that we already petition, we know we already supplicate, and we have that joy that we are giving thanks, and we move on. So when we pull down that stronghold and whatever is bombarding our mind, we take it to the Lord. Whatever is bothering us, we take it to the Lord. As it comes, you take it away one time. Soon as it comes here, you go that way. And say, Lord, here, this is what's bothering me. Lord, you deal with it through our prayer and supplication. And that is how we defeat anxiety, through relationship with our Father, through Jesus, through knowing who Christ is, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Lord of Salvation, the Prince of Peace, through putting our petition in his hands and knowing it is in his hands, so we buffer it with our thanksgiving. Amen? So it's threefold. We just receive the Lord, we just lay our petition down, and we make it like, as it comes in our mind, we just put it in his hands. So we know what to think of. Sometimes someone may tell us something about someone else. We pray about that instead. That's why he said flee from gossip. That is one of the things that hinder our prayer. Someone may look to tell you something about someone else and you hold on to that and it's not even facts. But it's a hearsay. It happens a lot in marriages where someone may tell the person something about their husband and what they should do, go and speak to the person. And you pray for them. Or someone, you may hear someone don't like you or someone want to do something. No. That is not lovely. That is not of a good report. That is not what the Lord wants us to think about. Whenever a situation comes our way or we hear something, we pray for the person or we pray about the situation. And that's how we be able to have that peace. So we are to keep that peace by keeping our mind Stay on the Lord. Hallelujah. My last point is power. So we do not receive a spirit of bondage again to fear, but we receive the spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. Amen? So we know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We have power. We have abilities that the devil know that we have. The devil knew that what God had deposited into mankind. That's why he tends to distract them, have our mind divided, and have our mind preoccupied with the cares of the world and not on the cares of him. So we are actual walking powerhouse. We say we have two divine intercessors. Christ, he intercedes for the believer. He's our advocate, our defender, 1 John 2, 1. And the Holy Spirit help our weaknesses, for we do not know what we are to pray for, but the Spirit himself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So we know when we have the Holy Spirit, we could cry out, whether it be in tongues or whatever, however we supplicate. We have the Holy Spirit that in us, through tongues, will intercede on our behalf. So we have a lot going for us. We are strengthened by might by his spirit in the inner man, Ephesians 3.16. Here's just a few things that the Lord commissioned to carry the gospel through the world. These shines shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Mark 16, 17 to 18. The signs, therefore, confirm the ministry of Christ's ambassadors. This is the power that is in us. We are ambassadors of Christ. And the Lord said, these signs shall follow them that believe. And in who? His name. Amen. So as ambassadors of Christ, we are able to pray for our sister 
or a brother that may be held captive in bondage. We have seen it and we have, we have witnessed it to know that God is able to deliver. That's why he used us as his vessel, as our, his vessel of clay as ambassadors through his Holy Spirit that lives in us. So this is the power when we have his peace and where our mind is not preoccupied or divided by anxiety or worry. We can move forward now in the power that God has in us. We can move forward now in the purpose that we were here for. We could move forward and fulfill that plan that he has for us, that we should, that each one of us have a mandate. Each one of us have a plan. Each child is born with a plan and a purpose that God has for them. So once we let his peace fill us, we let that power which is in us, which is his Holy Spirit, to fulfill that which is, that we should be following, that is mandated for us. Matthew 10, 7 say, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. The Lord also give us the keys to the kingdom to bind and to loose. So we have the ability through his Holy Spirit that we could be able to pray for one another. If our brother is sustained bondage, we could pray for them. We could be able to go to the hospital or pray for someone and actually see people got healed. God is a miracle working God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changed not. And his Holy Spirit is alive and real and in us. And through having that peace and moving forward, we could be able to move forward in the things that we really should be doing for him. And as I conclude... To experience God's peace and freedom from anxiety, we must fix our minds on the things that are true, noble, right, pure. And this peace is an inner tranquility that will meditate in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen? It involves a firm conviction through Jesus Christ's redemptive blood for mankind. God's love is active in our lives. So we are to know his love that is in us and his love that is for us. The second, true relationship, we can have fellowship with God and we can have access to his throne of grace that we can boldly go before him in our prayer petition. We are to stand as ambassadors and continue the great commission of our Lord to spread the gospel with signs following. So the peace of God it's for us to not to be bombarded by the, the cares and the things that is happening, but let his peace fill our heart because we have the Prince of Peace, which is our Redeemer, in our heart. Amen? And we are to know that we could pray and supplicate one day at a time. Amen? And we know his Comforter is with us, which is his Holy Spirit. The Lord is wonderful Counselor. There's no greater Counselor than Christ. So when we take our thoughts and our imagination to him, he will comfort and counsel us. I've seen it and we live it every day. So I just want to say, peace and grace be unto you. The Lord Jesus Christ, I would like for you to turn to your neighbor. And a popular statement that Paul always say in all his writings, just turn to your neighbor and say, grace to you. And peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. One more time because we're muttering and we're all over the place. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and really mean it from your heart. Neighbor, grace, grace. to you grace. and peace. From God, from God, our Father, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For let your stronghold, let his earth and worry, fear and doubt all against them, O God. And let your peace find his heart and mind to stay for you, O Lord. Fill him right now with a fresh anointing, O Lord. 
so that I could have peace, Lord Father, but I was just trying to sit thank you for delivering it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you, O God. It's your man, you pray, O God, that by the power of your spirit, that you would just take charge and control of his mind, the circumstances that he placed himself in, and the situations that is plaguing him. We pray, O God, that your name will be glorified, for you said in your word that you will keep us in perfect peace, if we keep our minds stable. You can bind principalities, powers, and rulers that are trying to hinder him from moving forward. And we pray, O oh Father God, that he works his way, makes a step far, and works his way out of the situation. Thank you for doing it. In Jesus. Amen. Lift our sister before you. We pray, O oh God, about the struggles that she's faced, she has faced over the last couple of months family, the disappointment. I hear you have been asking yourself, what is going on with me, boy? What is with Lord, what is really going on with me? It seems as though the people who are not in Christ get in everything that they want, and it seems as though I feed them. <laughs> as though like things not looking out for The Spirit of God just says, according to Psalm 27, to fret not yourself over evil doers. He says you don't have to fret yourself over it. Because he says he is your peace, as the message says. And he will keep you in perfect peace. You have a decision to make, and it's a decision about your spirituality, a decision about your home, a decision about your workplace. It's a major decision. There's one decision you have to make that will affect all the things that have been in your life over the last five to six years. God says, I will give you a dream, and you'll be wondering what this dream is about. But I speak to you through your dream. And God says he will begin to show you how to work your way out of the circumstance. But you have to decide that this is what you want. So receive it. Walk in it even more. He says he will keep you in good pieces. You want something from God. But you want it at your own convenience. You don't want it at God's convenience. You want it at your own convenience. You want it at your own convenience. And it seems as though that when you want to move into certain things, it's not happening for you because you want it your way. But God says it has to be done my way. My way. Say, I'm not forcing you into anything because I want it to be of your free will. And that free will is that sometimes you feel life is getting away. And things are getting away and getting ahead of you. Things are getting away and getting ahead. The Father says even now that by the power of His Spirit, that His grace be upon you, that you have peace of mind, that he renews your mind, renews your conscience, consciousness, even right now, in the name of Jesus. Now be free in the name of Jesus. And walk in freedom. For I have come for you to be committed to me. And if you want to see the things happen and fall in place, it calls for a deeper level of commitment. You decide, says God. It's your decision. And I'm not going to force you to make that decision. You decide for yourself how you want to walk and who, how you want to live your life in Jesus. Thank you for joining us on this program today. 
I hope that it has been inspiring and fulfilling to you this morning. Please be reminded that our services begin at 8.30 a.m. and we also begin praise and worship at 9 a.m. We are located at number 236 Eastern Main Road in Barataria. Thank you.